Hello and welcome to my channel, Ruckasaurus Rex, where we discuss all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. It's been a while, I know, haven't, uh, haven't posted in uh, well over a week. That's because uh, no, new, no new product has come in. Been awaiting the, uh, the arrival of uh, another set of these guys here, my Ceratopsians from the Beasts of the Mesozoic, which I have. So uh, we've got uh, three more, three more uh, figures to review. And I actually have another order coming in, but by the time they get here, I won't be here. I'll be on vacation. So uh, there'll be a lack of uh, reviews, a lack of content for me uh, once again for about uh, a week plus after uh, I go through these three that I have here. We're starting off here with Medusa Ceratops Loki, uh, or Loki, however you want to pronounce that. It's got two eyes, so that tells me it's probably a hard eye. Loki. Loki. <laughs> Medusa Ceratops. We're going to go with that. Anyway, you see uh, the packaging there. We've got the uh, sleeve. You see the artwork on that sleeve. It's 1 18th scale. Going around. We, of course, have the, uh, the Beast of the Mesozoic logo as well as the Triceratops avatar. Then when we turn to the other side here. We here on the back we have uh, that artwork again. It's uh, this is what the uh, collectible card that's included will look like, and you have uh, the information the readout Medusa Ceratops. This is uh, number five in uh, wave one. Medusa Ceratops stands for Medusa Horned Face, and uh, the info is as follows: It's the length of a Medusa Ceratops is up to six meters or 19.7 feet long. More or less just say 20. Location, Judith River Formation, Montana, USA. The time period, the late Cretaceous, 77.5 million years ago. Once considered a chasmosaurine, Medusa ceratops is now classified as a centrosaurine due to its similarities to Alberta ceratops and Wendy ceratops. Its generic name, Medusa, is a reference to Greek mythology, while its specific name, Loki, is from Norse mythology. So yeah, I guess we can pronounce it Loki. They just added another eye to it. It is what it is. Looking at the top of that sleeve, you see it's got 20 points of articulation, realistic movement and detail. Profile card included number five. Removing that sleeve so you can see all of the figures in wave one, which is pretty extensive. Pretty extensive. And uh, there's still a few left of uh, this wave that uh, I haven't gotten yet, but uh, almost done though, almost done. I believe I still need Styracosaurus and the Pseudoceratops. I believe, uh, oh, and Tri, oh no, I, that, that's the uh, the uh, subadult. I have the subadult Triceratops, and uh, I think I also need Diabloceratops. But uh, yeah, we're getting there. So uh, without further ado, we're going to uh, get this thing opened up. As with all Beasts of the Mesozoic figures, they come with a, uh, a very uh, detailed backdrop. This is no different as we have a uh, basically a, uh, a marsh, a lake. And uh, yeah, this is a very, very nice backdrop. As previously stated and with all BC the Mesozoic action figures, they come with an informational collectible card and you see it's the same artwork that uh, we saw on the sleeve and on the, uh, the front of the box. And uh, yep, yeah, it's some pretty nice artwork there and the information that I read off earlier is on the back of the card. Also included are instructions on if your tail is too hard to uh, install, to apply, on how to use heat, either with a hairdryer or with hot water. My tail uh, was uh, pretty easy to get on this time. As uh, you all should know by now, these uh, ceratopsians, they come with the tail separated. Here we have our Medusa ceratops on a rotating base. You can get a uh, total roundabout visual of the figure 
and its coloring, which by the way, its, uh, it's coloring has been inspired by the Cape Girdled Lizard. Any of you that uh, collect or follow Beast of the Mesozoic, you know that uh, Mr. Silver, David Silver, bases the colors of his dinosaurs off of existing reptiles and amphibians. Uh, and then takes artistic license, he takes liberties to uh, expound upon that. So uh, that's uh, that's what we have here, and it uh, the coloring looks absolutely gorgeous. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. I'm loving it, um, just looking at it already. So um, let's get uh, our Medusa Ceratops off of the uh, base and take a uh, more detailed look at it. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, while you guys are doing that, what I'll be doing is taking a measurement of our Medusa Ceratops and from its beak to the end of its tail, we're talking about a little bit more than a foot, about a foot, do that one more time just so I can get more accuracy there, about a foot and a quarter. So uh, at those measurements and going off of the 118th scale that uh, these figures are built upon, that would uh, make this animal, if it were alive, a little over 18 feet. So uh, you could uh, play the role that it's almost fully grown or it may be a female at uh, 18 feet since these uh, these critters grew to nearly 20 feet so uh, yeah there you have it but it's right there in that scale so you're not far off you're not far off at all let's uh, get uh, a closer look at our uh, Medusa Ceratops uh, primarily that skull which of course is the highlight of all Ceratopsians now getting a closer look at the uh, the skull there, as so I turn the head even more to profile, you get to look at those colors. That cape girdled lizard uh, base is uh, looking very striking on this figure. We've got uh, there around the, uh, the Finestra area, it's like kind of yellowish. It's got a wash over it to uh, like a uh, kind of a beige or gray wash. The uh, close to the beak's tip there, you've got red, and of course the beak itself is a gray and there's a wash on that. Looking at the mouth, if you could see in there, it's pretty difficult to see in there, but uh, it's got that nice wet look. The uh, nasal uh, stump, <laughs> we'll call it, is the same color as the beak. The horns are... Uh, striped they're the same color as the beak and the uh, nasal stump if you will we'll call it a boss the nasal boss um, and it's uh, striped with a uh, like a, a very light kind of grayish brown color in there looking at the just face forward you see we've got uh, like maroon color going on and uh, as always around the uh, the frill the top of the frill area you know looking like eyes or what have you you've got uh, it changes color it's like a, a deep orange and it gets lighter uh, still orange yellowish orange and then we get uh, beige centers there on the uh, more oval type of uh, interior the frill is primarily a maroon color and you could uh, there's the scalation in there the uh, perimeter of the frill, you see you've got the spikes there, and they're the same colors as the boss and the uh, the uh, the brow horns. And the top there, you've got uh, the same um, the same design, where it's the same color as the boss, the beak, and the uh, the brow horns, and it's got the same striping as the brow horns have. So you've got that. Looking at the side, you have some blue there at the uh, the edge of the cheeks, and then there's the uh, 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 cheek spike that's coming out there. Looking at the back, the uh, back of the frill, turn the head so you can see it better. Back of the frill is just a uh, solid the burgundy. There is a wash back there, kind of dark. Looking at that neck, you've got uh, it starts off very dark. It's like it's 
burgundy, but they went on and uh, put a very dark, maybe black wash over it uh, as it stripes down and you have, uh, you have this uh, yellowish, uh, like pale, pale yellow kind of uh, coloring there. And it's actually uh, over the, uh, or under the, uh, where the burgundy is. And then they put a, uh, a red wash over that to blend that in. And that's more or less the same throughout the body. It starts off very dark, gets maroon, and then you have the stripes there. And there's the yellow with the red wash there. And you have some spots there of the, the maroon or the burgundy. And uh, the legs primarily are that uh, that pale yellow and then it's got that maroon color there or burgundy uh, with that dark wash the bottom uh, the four limbs the bottom of the four limbs uh, on the outside it's got that uh, burgundy color and you have some of that uh, yellow there the interior as you can see there on the right foreleg is that uh, that light uh, yellowish type of color that the feet are the burgundy and the toes the toes I don't know if you could see that but the toes are painted uh, kind of gray the uh, hind legs are um, starting off you know you've got that burgundy dark you've got the nice textures there and uh, it's basically burgundy all the way through to the toes which are also gray but then when you turn to the back the rear of the hind limbs you can see that you've got like a uh, a uh, mango orange type of coloring that suddenly abruptly turns into that uh, that pale yellow color um, that's of course with both sides the tail as you go down it's uh, it's got that burning with the with the dark wash then it turns into that deep orange kind of color like a blood red orange then it goes yellow and then it gets to that beige underneath it keeps going down until it uh, ends in a solid uh, solid like maroon tip there and of course you got it on the other side there you can see all the nice osteoderms looking at the top there you see how it works from the spine it starts off dark and then uh, falls off into that burgundy color and other things so you see that there and then of course we're back to the other side there so pretty cool as far as articulation is concerned the head you've got uh, articulation with the beak unfortunately you can't close the beak fully so you get that much and you're not going to get much in terms of closing you've got articulation there in the neck where you can go very nice left and right just the head alone and then when you combine it with neck articulation you can get very nice range like that you can get your medusa ceratops to look up that far and it can look down a uh, fair ways very nice right as far as the body you can turn it left right get some up and down in that as far as the forelimbs are concerned, you can of course rotate it. You've got articulation at the elbow and you do have articulation at the foot, hoof, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you can go uh, up, down, and you can rotate it. And uh, there is some pivot in there. And you can splay the legs out. So that's very cool too. As far as the hind limbs are concerned, you can rotate it. There is some very little splay action, very little, but you do have it there. You have articulation there at the knee and at that secondary joint, that secondary joint. And then of course with the foot itself, you can rotate it. And uh, I think that's about all you're gonna get out of that. As far as the tail is concerned, you can of course move it left, right, up, down and if you wanted to you could spin it so that's the uh, articulation scheme 19 points of them on our medusa ceratops and to uh, compare with a couple of its cousins we have here the protoceratops hellenicor highness which is the uh, larger of the two uh, known species of uh, protoceratops 
but still pretty tiny. They started out kind of small, didn't they? And since these two are closely related, and they in fact mis mistook uh, the Medusaceratops for one, we've got it next to the Windoceratops, and uh, I can see why they uh, why they were able to uh, why they made that uh, that uh, false assumption there. They're pretty similar in size, and. Uh, they, uh, you know, they both have bosses for their nasal horns and uh, very ornamental with their frills. And of course, as we always try to do, uh, try to take some uh, some poses with the backdrop that comes included. So here's, uh, here we have uh, one of them. And here's a, another pose. I'm trying to uh, show that he's, uh, or I'm a, uh, classifying this uh, Medusa Ceratops as female. She's trying to take a drink of water. So I've got her uh, forelimb splayed out. Here we have our Medusa Ceratops rearing up, uh, attempting to fend off an attack. So uh, yeah, as always, I love the uh, articulation possibilities with these figures. So in conclusion, the beasts of the Mesozoic Medusa Ceratops, Loki, Beautiful figure as uh, they all are ceratopsians very nice. Of course Once again, the highlight is that skull the frill and of course uh, the color scheme That was selected for this species the cape gilded lizard looks very good on this model here this uh, action figure I should say and uh, Yeah, now uh, as far as the cons the uh, the mouth not being able to fully close is uh, bothersome for me. I am uh, very annoyed that I can't uh, close the mouth. I mean, the difference between uh, the the closed articulation and the open is minimal at best. You can't even tell if you did it or not, but it is what it is. Everything else in terms of articulation is working fine. So uh, I'm happy about that. It's a very uh, nice figure and uh, I'm very happy to add it to my collection. This is number one in this next set of three that I have to review for you. So uh, yeah, that's how we're going to uh, end it with our Medusa Ceratops. Once again, please like the video, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, trying to grow it uh, slow but surely, especially since uh, you know have to wait on certain product. Uh, when I uh, get back off of my vacation, I will try to uh, start doing more like Throwback Thursday type of deals where I'll review some uh, some models from uh, the past that uh, may be of interest to you. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Anyhow, um, I also need you guys to uh, comment below on uh, what you've seen here. If you've got questions, concerns, critiques, whatever levy them down below and if you want to be notified when I upload another video please hit that bell down below as well and notified you shall be so uh, once again this has been the uh, Medusa Ceratops from Beast of the Mesozoic by Creative Beast Studio so uh, I'll be uh, signing off now so thanks again guys see you next time take care